Hey YouTube, how you guys doing? Jared Fuller here. Today is Sunday, January 6, 2019. I almost forgot what day it was. <laughs> we are officially in the very first video update of the new year. It is so great to have you along. Um, you may have noticed some changes here in the Sunday video update. Well, of course, I'm using my desk lamp here, which you can't see. It's off camera. But the screen is wider, and I'm, you know, moving more, you know, like in real time. Um, I'm not using my old camera, which is, it was kind of like a buffering kind of a thing. Um, Amy's in her be in the bedroom. Dad, he's sleeping, which now with a wider screen, you can see who's sleeping on the couch or sitting on the couch or what have you. Um, but yeah, I decided to upgrade my webcam on New Year's Eve, and I like it. I've been kind of toying around with it, having a little bit of fun with it. Um, and so what you see here, and I decided to add this to my Sunday video updates this year, in addition to the spinning into view, um, I decided to add a stack of my journals because I write journals and poetry, of course, and and I wanted to um, somehow display, you know, or at least show my viewers what I like to do, what my hobby is. So writing, and these are these are just, you know, regular composition books. They're all blank journals, by the way. I have yet to write in them. Of course, this would be like book 164. I'm nowhere near being in book 164. Um, but yeah, that's one of the uh, changes that I wanted to bring to uh, my Sunday video updates in, in addition to the desk lamp and the spinning into view. Um, here we are. I hope you've all been doing well. I hope you had a safe and wonderful and happy new year uh, and a new year's Eve. Um, so I've, I, I was contemplating discussing this because it's a new year and I don't want to start the new year off on the wrong foot. But it appears that that is what has happened. Um, Friday was not a good day for me at all. And I'm not going to get into the specifics of what happened. Um, some of my friends know, a select few of my, my friends know what happened on Friday. Because I would text them or message them on Facebook. But in a nutshell, and keep in mind, I, I'm not an angry person. I... I don't have anger issues. I don't have temper tantrums or anything like that. But on Friday, I ended up losing my cool with some people, which almost resulted in me going to jail. Um, because I, I, I had asked a question and I was looking for clarity and the person would not um, give me a specific answer. And, the, you know, it was an important question. Uh, because I, you know, any other question, you know, I, it, it, it depends on what, you know, is the question about my livelihood or is it, you know, what tastes better? It's, it's, you know, like this problem here is trivial and this is like major heavy duty. And it was a major heavy duty question. And, and it, it regarded me, of course, and I got no answer. I didn't get a straight answer. And I kept asking over and over again. And I was dismissed, and um, I lost my temper. I lost my cool. So, and that's all I'm going to mention about that, um, because there, there's there's more to the story, and it, you know, there's much more. There's specifics, and like I said, only a, a select handful of my friends know exactly what happened because I explained to them in detail. And they know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't know who exactly watches my videos between Facebook and Twitter. Although my trolls and my haters on Twitter, they're having a field day. Especially Jack Karstens, who, which by the way, remains without a profile picture. And all you see are screenshots of what people have said about me that I had supposedly done. Um... Now listen, and I want to make sure that I start this new year off 
by saying this because I've, I've spent a good bulk of 2018 trying to get this concept into people's minds. This is how this is how you have to look at social media because see everybody who anybody who sits behind a computer or hides behind their cell phone they have the power of anonymity they've got that that digital courage as it's called that they can sit there and spew off all the garbage they want about someone they don't like and fabricate stories and then spread those uh, fabricated stories around to the person's friends to get them to believe something for no good reason. And that is exactly what has happened with me time and time again. If, if someone's making a claim about anything or anyone, just, just a screenshot of a complaint is not evidence. That's not evidence of the complaint. That is just evidence of a complaint of, you know, it, let, let me rephrase that. It's not evidence of the, or it's not, it's not the evidence itself of a complaint. The, the screenshot capturing someone's complaint, and this is how ridiculous people are when it comes to logic and critical thinking. They don't understand they're wasting their time. They're chasing their tails when they take screenshots of people who just so much as make a complaint. Well, they wouldn't be making complaints for no reason. Really? This is 2019. People complain about things all the time, things that aren't even true to begin with. Um, again, you can fabricate a story to get back at someone in retaliation, to get your revenge uh, because these people have sweet teeth for revenge. You can take all the screenshots you want of someone who is making complaints. That's anecdote. That's not evidence in and of itself. If you're making a claim, you still have to demonstrate the the validity of the claim. You have the burden of proving what you're what you're claiming. So all you people who are taking screenshots and see people, so all these people are complaining about Jared Fuller, big deal. I complain about a lot of people. But if I made a complaint or if I made a claim against someone that they are being a certain way, I would then have to further demonstrate the, the validity of the claim I'm making. I would have to provide evidence to support the claim. I don't just write it on social media and oh well, because I said it, it's true willy nilly. Well, it doesn't work that way. I would you would have to still provide evidence to support the claim. Um, but this is still an ongoing problem, and I this Jack Karstens, who is a troll, by the way, and I've told all my friends on Twitter to watch out for people like that because, again, there there's screenshots of complaints from other people which have not met their burden of proof they're just complaints first of all second of all anyone can fabricate a story and do you know how i know that is because i write poetry poetry just like the music you listen to the songs you identify with those are fabrications not every poem you read and not every song you listen to necessarily ties in corroboration with factual events. I can dream up a story in my head and I can bow tie the words around the idea that I have in my head and present it as a poem. Much in the same with songwriting, you got to have an imagination. And the fact that you have people out there who will dream this shit up all day and night and then, oh, well, we can say this and we can pass it off as a fact because there's people who already can't think for themselves anyway. Um, so it's easy for those people to find things like that compelling. And it's a scary world we live in. We have people who just, they believe things for no good reason. And like I said, yeah, I've, you know, people say, well, Jared, harass his parents. No, I don't. Asking questions is not harassing anyone. I just want to get to the bottom of something and throwing in the harassment card 
as a cop out and it's chicken shit. And if someone is asking for your honesty, the least you could do is be mature enough to offer that and have a civilized, mature conversation from one adult to another. But most grown people are children and they don't know how to grow up. They're, they're, they're men, cha men children and women children. Um, they want to act like they're still in high school and they act in the most immature, just stupid ways. Um, and I, it's very hard to take people like that seriously when they collectively want to gang up on you and attack you because they don't like you. Well, there's a lot of people I don't like either. I don't like, I don't like trolls, but the difference between me and them, the thing that separates real people from fake people is that a real person will actually come out and tell you that this is what I'm thinking and feeling. I don't like that person, but I'm not going to degrade them. I'm not going to make up stories and I'm very well-minded in fabricating ideas and stories. I just haven't done it because I'm more mature. I have reached a certain maturity level where I don't make up stories just to get back at people. I don't you know, savagely rip apart someone's reputation just because I don't like them. Um, but that's that's the world we live in. And to all my friends who are watching this, um, again, Jack Karstens is a troll. There's no profile picture. And even if there is a profile picture after this video has been shared on Twitter and, you know, tossed around like a beach ball back and forth on Facebook by my haters, um, just, just know that the there are people out there who, um, you know, they like to make up stories, and they they have this digital courage. You know, they sit behind their electronic devices, and they have such great courage to let garbage spew out of their sewer holes that they call mouths about people that they don't like. They wouldn't dare step foot in my front door and say the exact same thing to my face. And they know that I know they wouldn't do it. So, um, that's what I'm saying. Just let them, let them do what they're going to do. My, my real, my friends know better. And again, you see complaints about Jared Fuller between Facebook and Twitter. Okay, those are complaints. Have you been able to demonstrate the proof of your claims? Do you have some kind of evidence other than just because you say so? That's not enough. You know, there's a there's a much higher standard of evidence when you're making a claim other than it's on Facebook. It's got to be true. No, your 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 logic is flawed, and you know, social media facilitates illogical thinking. And I, I'm, I just, I don't know what else to say. I don't want to be a, a, a proponent of that. Although I use social media uh, gracefully to keep in touch with friends and, and some family, not all family, but I consider a lot of my friends more family than friends. Uh, because I, I, I even said this last year that you don't, necessarily have to be blood related to be family there's there's friends i have from all over this country that i would consider more family than friends because we've we've reached that understanding in our friendship and we've talked away from social media and we've actually got to know one another better and they don't think i'm a threat and they have no reason to i don't think that they're bad people i don't think that they're a threat i have no reason to um, I'm not convinced otherwise, uh, until I have such time to believe something, which if you're going to make a claim, well, this, and this happens a lot too. Like I can go up to the bar and that's, you know, it's bar, it's a bar room setting. You know, you're going to get people shooting off at their mouths. Um, I don't freak, I don't frequent the bar. I go there every once in a while, but there's people up there who will sit and gossip about each other 
And it's like I let it go through one ear and out the other because it's a barroom setting. People are drinking. I have no reason to think that anything they say carries any water in truth because it's just talk. It's booze talking. It's barroom gossip. Uh, so I just let it go through one ear and out the other. But there's people on social media because this is this fake reality that you're only getting peripheral vision of someone's life, you know, like with a with a a jeweler's eye kind of a thing. You don't see every shade of a person's life. Just recently on Facebook, someone had posted, "Well, no, I don't need your approval. No, your your approval is not something I covet." And yet there you are coveting the approval that you apparently don't care for. See how self-contradictory that sounds? Um, I'm sure we're all guilty of saying things like that. We go on social media to get the approval and have the nerve or the gumption to say, well, I don't covet your approval. And that's, come on, come on. You, you've just contradicted yourself. Um, please. You know, I. it's that kind of, you know, narcissism and egotism this this chest pounding and you know you see only the highlights of a person's life everybody's got problems you don't see them you don't read about them um it's what i call sharpshooting you you only see the good side of a person's life or the good moments of a person's life um you know it's like if you're going to share your life with your friends you know put all your chips in and and give other parts of your life uh share other parts of your life and share and convey your thoughts um but to go on social media and say well i don't covet your approval is not something i covet so why are you there coveting the approval that you supposedly don't care about it's it's it's, it's a self uh it's a self-contradiction um i but if i point this out you know, then suddenly Jared's trying to pick a fight. Um, but oops, I already did point it out. Um, oh, well. But anyway, I I enjoy this new webcam that I got. I went to Best Buy in Saginaw, and it's a Logitech C920 Pro. Um, it, it's like forty nine ninety nine out the door. I wanted to upgrade my webcam to something a little more high tech, and the picture's clearer, the screen's wider, and I'm actually, you know, when I'm moving the picture, I'm actually moving in better real time, um, which is great. I I'm really enjoying this new webcam. I've been kind of tinkering around with it a little bit. There's all kinds of different features on here. It's pretty cool. Um, I was watching a, a YouTube live stream, I think it was last week, and the person who was talking in the live stream, I noticed that his picture was crystal clear. And it's like, man, this is really, you got a really good screen. I'm amazed at how well, you know, your, your screen is coming in really clear and you're moving you know, like you're you're like moving in real time. You know, when you move around in your in your picture or in front of your camera, you're moving in real time, which I thought was was really really magnificent. And I, I was asking him questions, and I said, "Well, what what kind of camera do you use?" And he had given me the information, of course, Logitech C uh, C920 Pro. And so I did a little research on Google, and I found that Best Buy sells them for $49.99 plus tax, and there we go. Now I have a new webcam. I upgraded to a more high-tech uh, version, and and some webcams are actually more expensive than that even, um, <clears throat> but I figured I would go try to go with the most inexpensive. I had the, the old webcam that I used, um, that was like a $20 webcam. It was a cheap walmart special it's like well if i want to get better quality i might have to pay a little extra or a little more so that's what i did 
and I'm satisfied. I really enjoy this this new webcam. It's nice. And something else I enjoy very much is to remind all of you to visit GuideStar.org. Right there at the bottom of your screen. Yes, yes. GuideStar.org has a complete listing of 501c3 nonprofit organizations and LLCs that have been approved by the federal government of the United States of America. Don't be fooled. Don't be duped. Visit GuideStar.org today. The very first time I got to say that in 2019, and it feels great. Um, in other news, we, we lost some celebrities. For those of you who are wrestling fans, um, WWE ring announcer Mean Gene Okerlund had passed away at the age of 76. Um, the captain from Captain and Tennille had also died at, at age 76. And there was a third person who passed away, and I'm not going to remember right off. It escapes me, but there was a third passing. I think um, Bob Einstein, I think it was, from... I think it was from Curb Your Enthusiasm. I think that's what it was. Uh, he also passed away. And now that I think about it, yeah, that's who it was. Bob Bob Einstein, or Einstein, or however you say it. From Curb Your Enthusiasm, he passed away as well. So not a good way to start the new year. Um, I had read an article, and I don't know how true it is um, or how reputable the source is, but I had read that uh, Hollywood Hulk Hogan is supposed to be making a return to WWE Raw, which is tomorrow night, um, to talk about Mean Gene Okerlund, because Mean Gene had been a ring announcer for any number of years. I remember him as a kid growing up, uh, watching him on wrestling all the time. He had that, that certain voice, and he would talk to the wrestlers. He would interview the wrestlers in the ring or in the, in the walkway where the wrestlers come out. And he had that, that voice, you know, he had that certain voice about himself and he had his, his own style of doing things. And you don't forget people like that. The, the people who, even in the entertainment world, it's the people who have their own style and, and uniqueness about themselves. Um, me and Gene Okerlund was like one guy that I really liked to listen to. Um, so yeah, that, that was a big loss in WWE. There's been all kinds of death um, as of late between December and, and this month. It has been good. Um, but all things considered, um, for those of you who are friends with me on Facebook and we're following one another on Twitter, you're following me on Twitter. Um, I, I know I've, I've not really been as talkative lately and I do apologize. I don't purposely mean to be unsociable. Um, but there's just, there's been all kinds of not so good things happening and I don't want to burden my friends with my problems because you're my friends and, and although, yeah, I should be able to talk to my friends, um, I don't want to burden you with my problems or my issues because we've all got issues. We've all got problems somewhere. And with Internet trolls, obviously, they are a problem and they just won't admit to it. And they are problematic for other people, such as myself. We're trying to live normal lives, not through the, the eyes of social media, but we're trying to live normal lives and help people but what, what's being said on social media, it's, you know, it's like a, it's a monkey on your shoulder. Once you sign up for social media of any kind, you are subjecting yourself to um, turmoil and, and vitriol. And anything you put on social media follows you around. And it's kind of talking about, uh, Friday again, if I may, um, when I was just asking for clarity of a question I had and the person was not being honest, they were being vague. And it's like, you know, I don't live my life according to Facebook. I don't live my life according to Twitter. You do, obviously, because you want to believe what you're told by people who can say anything they want, obviously, and they haven't demonstrated the burden of proof. They, they haven't demonstrated uh, the validity of their claim. 
they have no evidence to support the claim. And they just kind of shrug their shoulders, which is, which means that they lack logic and critical thinking. They have flaws in the way they think. Um, there's nothing I can do about stupid people. You know, I, I've been told, well, Jared, you, I don't like that word stupid. You, well, you know, you may not like the word stupid, but I don't like stupid people. So I guess we're both at a disadvantage. Sometimes you just got to call a spade a spade. I call it like I see it. Uh, I was thinking about going up to my cousin's today. I was going to go yesterday, but I got sidetracked doing other things. And I think today will be the day I might go up there and surprise my, my cousins with a visit. Um, I, I hope they're going to be home today. I don't know what their plans are. So even if I drive all the way there and they're not home, well, hey, it'll be a trip out of the house because there's just been so much going on lately. I need to be around people who make me forget about my stresses and strains um, because I, I, I've, I've been having it rough lately. And so I just need to be around people who will make me forget about life for a little while or make me focus on other things that are not relevant to social media and I can spend time with people face to face. And I know my cousins would love to see me. They haven't seen me in, a, in quite a while and um, I, I'd love to see them again. I miss them. And so after I'm done with this, I might just hop in the van and take off. Um, but yeah, I I did I, I did lose my temper on, on Friday and uh, you know I it's I, I'm not a violent person I'm not an angry person I don't get pleasure from people's pain but you know just answer my question and just be honest that's all I asked that's all I asked um, some people don't understand that they think because a bunch of people say something then it's true I I, I don't I don't know why. I don't know why people think that way. They just do. They're idiots. See, these people who have this digital courage, everybody's a critic hiding behind the anonymity that is social media. But they dare wouldn't step foot through that door with a backbone and say anything to my face that they're saying behind their electronic devices. Everybody's got that digital courage. And the the, the whole idea of going on Facebook, um, because there are people who, um, and I'm not going to throw names out there, I think they know who they are. They go on Facebook for their ego stroke. They have the right set of people who they know will stroke their ego. They, they've got their approval. But yet when they go on there, they say, well, your approval is not something I covet. Well, that's kind of self-contradictory because if a person's approval is not something you covet, then why are you coveting by saying that their approval is not something that you covet? Well, if you don't care about it, why would you say it? <laughs> so. I know, I know, I'm... I'm I'm one of those uh, those logical pessimistic uh, pedants of society. I take note of things like that, even if you know it is trivial to most people. I find it to be comical. Um, that'd be like me going on Facebook and saying, "Well, I don't care what you people think about me." Well, if I don't care what you think about me. Why would I be going on Facebook to convey that point? Because Facebook, yeah, and I see this a lot too, or the people who will make announcements that they're going to block and delete people. You don't need to make the announcement, just do it and get it done. Um, 
They don't do that on Twitter. They don't say, well, I'm going to go on a cleaning spree on my Twitter account. I'm going to start blocking and unfollowing. Your announcement is not necessary. It's just not. Um, it's kind of a waste of time, actually. But. I know I'm I'm just I'm just a bright ray of sunshine today. It's the very first Sunday video update of the new year and I wanna get it off on the right foot. Um and of course with the wider screen you can see who's sitting on the couch. Well dad, he's snoozing right now. Maybe he's just lying there listening to everything I'm saying. Um but yeah, it's it's uh, a wider screen, which is what I like, which is what I was hoping would have been the case and as it turns out it is because now I can see the couch and I can see that I could always see the door um, and I figured I would add this pile of journals I may not use the dusk lamp in next week's video um, I figured I would just give it a trial I think I've used it in other Sunday video updates I'm just not really sure when that was I'm sure I have used it before, though. Um, so, wow, I don't really know what else to talk about. And it's the first Sunday video update. Um, I have, uh, I, or the first Sunday video update of the new year, anyway. I've I've had plans to want to do some things, but I I don't know now. I don't know now because... Anything I talk about here, and I want to publicly announce with my friends, my haters, my my elite group of naysayers, they take everything that I announce and they run back and they warn people. Um, just like, you know, I, I recently did a, a video chat with a friend of mine from New York. And we had discussed how, you know, these people are messaging me about you, telling me a bunch of things about you, and I wasn't going to budge. I wasn't going to believe it. Well, good. Don't. Because, you know, I've been to your house. Do um, you want me to come back? And I want to go back. Um, yeah. Don't. Just don't believe what people tell you. And my friend, I, I got to give her a lot of credit. She she was very swift and very intelligent. Um, not saying she's never intelligent, because I think she's one of the most brightest, smartest people I've ever met, met and known in my whole life. Um, but she was very swift in her responses when these people are saying all this negative crap about me. And she says, well, where's your proof? Show me some proof. Where's your evidence of this? And she kept throwing that back in their face. And eventually they would just stop messaging her because they have nothing to show. It's gossip. It stopped them dead in their tracks, which is a way it should be. And instead of, and this, this take this as a mental note. There's always going to be someone out there who does not like you. And they're going to fabricate all kinds of stories about you in order to get back at you in retaliation until they can provide something that is worth substance, evidence, hold their feet to the fire on that evidence. Say, you know what? You're here telling me this. Where's your proof? Can you prove it? A lot of my friends do that. Now, they may have taken my advice by watching previous several previous videos where I talk about uh, logic, critical thinking, and evidence, and things like that. But I've also mentioned it on Facebook any number of times, where you can't just believe something that someone tells you just because it's on Facebook. Just because someone complained about someone else, it doesn't necessarily make it true. It just doesn't. You have to provide, you have to give a little something more. Um, there are certain standards and criteria in which if you're going to make a claim, you have to prove your, your claim. You have to have some kind of evidence to back it up. Otherwise, you're just being a jackass who wants to sit and shoot off a bunch of crap from your sewer hole, which is your mouth. You know, and 
And a lot of these people are parents. And I find it hard to believe that they kiss their kids with that same lying, disgusting, foul mouth. I, it, It's beyond my comprehension. Because if you're going to act this way in front of your kids, if you're going to exhibit this kind of behavior, and if you're going to encourage your kids to behave this way, then you have failed as a parent. Congratulations. You want to raise a liar and a, and a buffoon in the world? Go ahead. Sick or not sick, it's no excuse. Um, I, I've dealt with all kinds of people like that. Um, and then they want to talk a bunch of smack on Facebook. Um, okay, nothing I can do about that, but, you know, I just shrug it off. Ignore it. Be on my way. But I, I talk about this a lot because my friends need to understand that if they're watching this, you're going to see all kinds of negative stuff about me. I'm telling you with 100% certainty as sure as there are stars in the night sky, it's not true. None of it's true. And I shouldn't have to sit here every week trying to... Uh, get people to understand that but anyway uh new year's was was a lot of fun new year's eve i had like three shots of hot damn seven beers i did remember seeing the ball drop and then i just passed out went to bed. um i went to bed i woke up the next morning um had a slight hangover a slight hangover um, but it was just a headache. That's all it was like a, like a minor, a very minor headache. I just went back to sleep. I slept it off. And one thing I've, I've learned is that when you have a hangover, don't lie flat on your back. What I did was I sat up, I slept, but I sat up sleeping and that seemed to help. Um, because, you know, it, it's when you lie flat on your back and I, have you know, it, it upsets your stomach, or at least for me, it, it upsets my stomach when I, you know, have a hangover. But anyway, enough talk about drinking. Um, I honestly don't know what's going on today. Uh, being Sunday, I don't know what Dad and Amy's plans are. I would like to go up north and, and see my, my cousins um, that I haven't seen in quite a while. I'm sure they miss me, and I miss them like crazy. Um, that's where I need to be. I need to be around people who make me forget about the stresses and strains of life. And, uh, you know, have some fun, chit-chat, hang out, watch TV together. I have... You know, they, their youngest, uh, she just had a birthday, and I missed the party because of inclement weather. They had a lot of snow and accumulating ice, so I was unable to make it when I wanted to be there for the birthday party. Um, it was for their youngest. Um, the two littlest kids, you know, they whenever they see me, they come running up to me, give me a hug. And then when I go into their house and I sit on the couch and I visit with everybody, and uh, the two littlest ones, I'll have one on each side. They'll snuggle up to me and, you know, because they don't see me a lot. When they lived in town, they used to see me every day, you know, every day without fail. I go up there and visit with them, but they move further away. And so it, it can be difficult for me to always make it up to see them. But weather permitting and the sun shining and it's actually nice today. Um I think I'll be making a special trip um, because I, I'm sure they miss me and I really, really miss them a lot. I love my family and, and I miss them terribly. Um, but anyway, I mean, this is a brief Sunday video update. I don't know what else to talk about. I think I've run out of things to say this week. Uh, I've been here for about 40 minutes. Bam, 40 minutes right on the money. Well, you're not going to see that. 
because after I edit, it's not going to be specifically right on the nose. At least I don't think. And if it is, you know, I, I'm sure I'll be getting the emails. <laughs> um, as far as mental health, it's social media, uh, Facebook and, and Twitter. I'll be the first to say this. And it's not in any way a cheap shot or an insult to my friends because I, I love my friends dearly. You know, there's people who are trying to guilt trip me into using the word love that I, I'm not allowed to love my friends or say sweetheart or anything like that. Up yours. Uh, I love my friends and they love me and that's it. But social media can be very taxing to your mental health. Because what it is, is you're inundating yourself with everybody else's lifestyles with, you know, they're posting pictures of houses and babies and cars and look at me on my cute, you know, and being a, a child of cancer survivor, I see a lot of people who visit the kids in the hospitals. I visit kids in the hospitals. Um, but they're just, they're getting their kudos. They're getting their, you know, my life means nothing if I'm not posting it on Facebook. And that's one of the things I kind of talked about. Uh, I think it was last week that, you know, you have to be able to do things in life. You should have, you should be able to get to live your life. Not according to Facebook standards. In other words, don't live, don't live in the moment just to have something to post on social media. Now, if you, when you're at an event or when you're with a, a you know, if you're at a, an event or when you're with family or whatever, you want to take pictures or whatever, fine. And evidently, I mean, I, no one can stop you from posting the pictures to your social media. But if you're doing things specifically for social media validation, you got to take stock in your life. You know, there are things in life that, I do that I don't always post on social media. I don't always talk about it. I probably don't even talk about it here. There's a lot of things I, I do that I don't talk about. Because there are some things in life that I have to enjoy for myself. And I have to enjoy the moment. In the moment. And not worry about anything else going on. Not giving a care in the world about what's being said on Facebook or Twitter what the haters and trolls have to say. There's got to be a time when people enjoy life without this desire, the fervent desire to plaster it all over social media. I see this on Facebook all the time. So you're going to the hospital to visit the kids. Cool. Good for you. Um, so you're going on a morning jog with the dog. Good for you. Um, and that's what it is. It's it's thumbs up, it's likes, and it's loves, and it's shares. Um, there's there's people who, and I see this kind of thing where they, they post incessantly, and they got to have their ego stroked every five seconds, which, again, like I said, take stock in your own life and, and decide what's important for you and stop living through the lens of social media. But they... Uh, you know, constantly, they got to have the approval of the people that that they have pandered to and the people who worship them. That's narcissism. A narcissist will never admit when they're wrong about anything. They will act like the world revolves around them. They um, they want people to think that they can never do wrong. That they're so pristine and so perfect. And I've actually seen people comment on posts. Um, oh, you're such a saint. And No, no, you're full of shit because there's no such thing as a saint. Um, none, of, none of that kind exists in reality. Uh, because just because there's people who are doing good things, it doesn't mean that, you know, there's nothing else going on in their lives. I mean, everybody has issues. We all have problems. Um, you don't always hear about those problems. Now, 
if you feel that your problems are not meant to be shared on social media, then shouldn't the same rule apply to your good times as well? That everything you do in life um, shouldn't be cheapened or devalued by a dopamine rush? It's like, it's, it's an addiction. A dopamine, and a mental addiction. You get the likes and the loves and the shares. And oh my God, that's so gratifying. That's this gratifying dopamine boost. Um, it's no different. If you, if you feel that there are certain things that you don't want to share, certain parts of your life that you don't want to share, like, oh, I'm having a bad day and, you know, you don't want to share that because you don't want to be a quote unquote negative Nancy, as they're called. Um, so then the same rule should apply to when you're having a good day or when you're out having fun. Spend time with your family and friends. Enjoy it. Live it up. Put the cell phone down and enjoy the company that's in front of you face to face. I've had, like I said, any number of, of amazing connections with people. Even if we talk on the phone, I know nowadays, especially nowadays, you can't get people to pick up a telephone if their life depended on it. Because Facebook and Twitter are the they're the third party platforms this is this is a new way of communicating which it's it's in and of itself really is not communicating because you're not really being sociable you're sitting behind a device or a computer waiting to talk to someone it's not being you know sociable i don't think I think being sociable is when you're away from your electronic devices and you're actually talking to people one-on-one, -on -one, which is exactly what I do when I go up to my cousin's house. Um, the kids, you know, they're kids. They're going to be on their, their tablets and their cell phones. That's, you know, that's the thing nowadays, um, which could also potentially be a problem if you are one of those parents who allow for electronic devices to teach your kids. Um but there are moments in life that you will never get back. And I, I don't live for face. I don't live to, to post things on Facebook. Sure. I, I share certain bits and, and details about my personal life. I write poems. I, I make the poem videos and post them here. Um, there are certain things I talk about and there are certain things that I incessantly talk about every week. It's like there's a repeat button and someone's got to take me off repeat. But I I keep reaffirming these ideas because there's people out there who still are in the dark about things that are happening and how you need to assess each and every situation. There's people who can't think that way. And it's very frustrating to me when I encounter people who are... So they, they let social media do their thinking for them, much in the same way that they let tablets and, and all these other electronic devices do their thinking for their children. Now, I'm not saying that electronic devices can't be educational. I'm sure there are children who learn from lots of electronic device games, you know, um, I'm not trying to take away from that and I'm not denouncing it. But what I'm saying is, is that what happened to people? You know, there used to be a time when parents were parents and they actually had taken the time to teach their kids and they sat down at dinner tables and they didn't have their faces buried in cell phones all day. You sat down at the dinner table, you talked about your day over dinner you had discussions. Even today when I go out in public, you know, I see, because I, I'm single, of course, I eat alone. And so when I'm out in public and I, I'm just observing, I'm looking around, there's, you know, couples who take their children out for a nice meal. <clears throat> and they have their faces buried in their phones. Everybody at the table. And it's like, 
What is so important on your phone? What is so important that's happening on your phone that you can't enjoy each other's company? You're physically like inches away from one another. What is so important on your phone that you can't enjoy the company between one another? I don't get it. I don't understand what happened to this generation. It's just, it's crazy to think about it. We have become so socially inept. We don't exercise people skills. You know, I call me old fashioned, but if I'm wearing a hat and I approach someone, I take my hat off before I shake their hand. That's just a polite thing to do. You know, um, I hold doors open for people. I don't need to, I don't even need to come here and, and, and explain all the good things I do for people. Um, because people, you know, and, and I think that's something else too that, that happens more so on, on social media than anything else is if you have to show, excuse me, if you have to actually show people what you're doing in the world. If you actually have to have proof that you're a good person, that you can't just, you can't stay humble and you can't be faithful or true to your own integrity. In other words, when nobody's looking, you're still going to be the same person as if everybody was looking. That's, that, I mean, that's, again, it, it devalues and cheapens your good deed. We can't do things in this world anymore without there being some kind of a string attached. Oh, I'll help you. I'll do that. But I got to have my face in there. I got to have my name in there. I have to be mentioned here. Come on. I don't care if you are a CEO of a nonprofit organization. I don't care if you are just someone who likes to help people. It doesn't matter. Do the things that you want to do. Live according to your integrity. Even when nobody's looking, you're still going to be the same person you've always been. And stop putting on this, this charade on social media of a persona that you want people to think is really you. When I'm on Facebook, if I really want to convey my thoughts, and I have, people have actually got to see the good and bad side of me. But the best thing about a bad side, and yeah, there is a good side to it, is the fact that you don't have to stay there forever. You can be angry and upset momentarily just as long as after you feel relieved after being upset, you go back to being that person that you are. That's integrity. Your integrity and your character is what counts. And... There are people who, they want to be angry with the world. They want to treat people like garbage. They want to waste all of their time bringing people down. They engage in, in this kind of chicanery and skullduggery by putting on this persona on social media because it's easy to do. It's easy to make yourself look like some kind of a saint or a, a hero or a captain, or a queen, or a prince. Uh, it's easy to make yourself look perfect. Nobody's perfect. We, we have um, just people who have narcissistic tendencies. And it doesn't matter if you're a member of the childhood cancer world, or if you're just a, a, an everyday average Joe. There are things in life that you can do that does not need to be broadcast on social media. Just being yourself. And you know what? Like I said, even when no one's looking, you're still going to be the same person. You're going to hold doors open for people. You're going to pull out a chair for someone. You're going to, you know, carry someone, help carry someone's groceries. I've done that. Um, you help.
uh, you know, like at, at the supermarket, you just volunteer to help carry out someone's groceries, especially an elderly person or a person who's disabled. I've, I've done that, but I don't need to come here and brag about it to get my five seconds of ego stroking. I don't need the validation because the validation is right here. That I did something good. I made a difference. I don't live for Facebook. I don't live for Twitter. Although I, I love my friends. But I don't live for the social media platforms. I just don't. It's a, it's a new truth I have discovered about myself. That I see how other people behave. And I see how other people interact. Because human beings are social species. And I see how people interact with one another on social media. It is, it's an online persona of who you want people to think you are. You, because we, like I said, we've all got problems. Everybody has issues. But with Facebook and Twitter, it's easy to purport to a fake online persona to get the respect. You know, and I'm not saying that the, that that people who are doing good things in the world, I'm not saying that they never do things when nobody's looking. I'm not saying that at all. Maybe they do. I don't know a whole lot about them. But there are people who, you know, I, I, again, I see this kind of thing every day on, on social media, especially Facebook. They could so much as say good morning. And you have people sharing and liking and loving their posts. It doesn't need that kind of validation. It doesn't need, you know, I could have just as well said that, you know, but you don't see them liking or loving or sharing my posts. Um, and I wouldn't expect them to. You know, it's like everything they touch does not turn to gold. And that's what they want you to think. They think because, oh, I have a, I, I'm a CEO of a, a nonprofit organization. Well, good for you. Good for you. You're not the only nonprofit organization out there that's actually making a difference in people's lives. Um, if I had a nonprofit organization, yeah, I would promote it and I would try to get the word out. But apart from that, just being a person, apart from the nonprofit organization, I would still help people. But I don't, I don't need, I don't need to prove that on a constant daily basis. And I sure as hell would make sure that I wouldn't be so self-contradictory to where I would say, well, your approval is not something I covet, but yet here I am coveting the approval that I don't care about. It, it doesn't make sense. None of it does. I'm sure I'm going to catch hell for this one too. Yeah, that's a that's a fine way to start off the new year by uh, you know speaking truth, which is something that people hate. They hate the truth. But anyway, um, I've been here for a little while, uh, going on an hour. But anyway, so this is the very first Sunday video update of 2019. I hope this will be a good year. I hope um, I get to do some traveling this year and to meet some friends that I've been talking to on Facebook. And there are people, my friends, who are being warned about me. Um, please just reject the notion that, that any of the stuff that they're saying is true. Um, until such time as they provide some kind of evidence, um, then they've really got nothing to go by. They have not a leg to stand on. So just disregard it. And I wanted to thank all of my new YouTube subscribers as well. Um, I appreciate your subscription. I appreciate your viewership. And what I do is, is I come here every Sunday. If you haven't noticed by now, I come here every Sunday and I talk about um, certain things that have happened in my life. Um, for those who are interested anyway. Um, I'm not a saint. I'm not perfect. I, I, you know, I'm a very, uh, hum I'm very human-like. I'm not perfect. Um, 
But this is what I do every Sunday, and I try to keep it brief, but I'm here for another hour. Um, but I do appreciate your subscription and your viewership. Uh, if there's any questions or um, anything you would like to talk to me about away from YouTube, uh, my email address is in the About tab section of my YouTube channel that you can find there. I'm not going to post it up on the screen because um, then it would become a free-for-all for my trolls and haters to blow up my inbox, and I don't need that. But, um, yeah, check it out. If, if you have a question or, or something you would like to talk about, email me, and I'll respond to your email as soon as possible. But I'm going to wrap this up. I'm headed up north, well, kind of up north, to my cousin's house. And I hope all of you have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for, wa uh, for watching. Welcome to 2019. Let's have a good year. Let's try to make this the best year we can. It didn't start off on the right foot for me, but it's never too late to make a comeback. It's never too late to turn around and make make things better. You know, we can, we can, there's still a chance for, for this year to get better. So much love to all of you, and I will talk to you later, and peace out.